you have reached Red Steel's awesome toy collectors review. I'm your man, Red Steel. And today, I got this one super early. That is Transformers, the movie studio series, Coronation Starscream. Transformers from the Transformers the movie studio series Coronation Starscream but before I get into the actual review I just want to go over some of the spectacular details on the package up front here this beautiful illustration of a scene from the movie where Starscream is being coronated into becoming the Decepticon leader along with Ramjet and Thrust then down here you have the Transformers the movie logo then on the side of the box here, you have this beautiful illustration of a close-up view of Starscream. Then on the other side here, you have a full body view of Starscream. Then on the back of the box, you have all of the figures featured, such as Starscream in his coronation gear, Starscream in his jet mode, and Starscream on his removable backdrop. Transformers Studio Series Leader Class Coronation Starscream. Coronation Starscream's Hasbro ID number is 86-12. His Takara Tomy ID number is SS-76. He was released on January 1st, 2022, and Takara will released third version on April 30th, 2022. He is sold at a suggested retail price of $52.99 and he is available at all major retailers. Coronation Starscream was released in Transformers Studio Series Leader Class Wave 8. Coronation Starscream is a Transformers the Movie inspired figure that converts into his jet mode in 29 steps. His accessories include his four null rays, two shoulder armor pieces, crown, cape, Throne, removable backdrop, and instructions. Coronation Starscream stands 8.5 inches tall and is meant for fans ages 8 and up. His figure was released to commemorate the 1986 The Transformers The Movie. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and transform Starscream into his jet mode. But the first thing you always wanna do is you always wanna remove all of the weapons. So I'm gonna pull his null rays off and put them off to the side. And the first step they want you to go ahead and do is you want to flip the arms up like that. You want to take the forearms like that. You want to flip them up like this. You want to do that to the other side. The forearm up. Then they want you to take the fist and flip them up against the forearms. Like that. And the next part they want you to do is they want you to rotate the forearms so they move into the, the bicep. But the trick is, a little white peg right here. I don't know if you guys can see it too well. Hole right here, you want to finagle it so that peg goes right in that hole. It goes right in a place like that. Go ahead and do that to the other side. Make sure this tabs down. And go ahead and finagle the forearm so that hole goes right there. So it's like that. Then once you go ahead and close the forearm up again. That. Make sure the fist is still up there. Go ahead and close it up again. Make sure the fist is against the forearm. Then they want you to go ahead, bring everything back down again. Then the next step, they want you to take this nose cone, back to Star Scream. They want you to go and flip it up, like that. And there's a tab right here. I don't know if you guys can see that. You can just tab it right into the cockpit. The next step they want you to do is they want you to take everything and bring it back like that. Then you take this cockpit right here, you pull that up, stand it straight up, you rotate it around, and right here, 
peg right here, just bring it right down like that. Then the next step they want you to go ahead and do, they want you to keep those arms that you worked so diligently on in the beginning, and go and fold those in. Both sides. Just tight position like that. And they want you to go ahead and close everything up. Just tap right in the place. Like that. Okay, for the next part of the transformation, you want to go ahead and take this red piece right here and flip it up. Then you want to go ahead and take these wing panels right here. You want to go ahead and flip those down. Like that. Do that to the other side. Take that blue wing panel right here, attached to the bottom of the foot. And flip it down. There's a tab right here, a hole right here. Just tab them right in. Tab that right in. Then the next thing I want you to do is to take these toe pieces right here and just flip them down. Flip that down. Then they want you to go ahead and take these wing panels right here and flip those down. Like that. And like that. Then the back of the thighs. You have a peg right here, hole right here, peg right here, hole right here. They want you to go ahead and bring everything together like that. Then they want you to go ahead and flip it back around. And by the knees, you can pull these panels down. Like that. And like that. Then they want you to go ahead and collapse the thigh into the leg. Make sure they're all the way in there. Then they want you to go ahead and close these panels back up again. Okay. Then they want you to go ahead and turn the figure around. I want to make sure these tabs right here go right into that hole. So all the other like that. Then you go ahead and flip the figure back around. You take that red panel right here and you flip it down. Turn the figure back around once again. Take those null rays that you removed earlier on. You put them in a little portholes. Make sure the null rays are facing down though. Go ahead and do that to the other side. Push them all the way in. Then they want to take these whole wing panels and they want to flip them all the way back around like that. And make sure that the tab goes into the hole right here. Just gotta make sure everything's in place. Go and do that to the other side. Flip it down. And just make sure that the tab and holes all go into place like that. And now you have Starscream in his jet mode. Now that I have Studio Series Starscream in this jet mode and on my display table, I'm gonna go and rotate him around so you guys can see what he looks like from all angles. And while I still have my display table, I will like to do a side-by-side -side comparison with him and my Earthrise Starscream. And as you can see, the white plastic is very similar in color. There's a few noticeable differences though. Like the blue in the Earthrise Starscream is a little bit darker and more reminiscent of the Generation 1 toy. And also the fin for the Earthrise Starscream is painted just like the Generation 1 toy. The Movie Studio Series Starscream has just a plain lighter blue to match the color scheme of the animated series and the movie. And also, the Decepticon symbols on the wings are a little bit larger on the Studio Series Starscream. And there's also the, the gray painting right here, which is lacking from the Earthrise Starscream. Earthrise Starscream is just kind of like a plain white, not a lot of deco on him. But other than that, both figures' transformations are identical. It's just uh, differences in the color schemes, but they're both identical figures. Now that I have Studio Series Coronation Starscream in this robot mode and on my display table, I want to go rotate around so you guys can see what it looks like from all angles. And I have to say, a lot of his engineering was borrowed from the Transformers Classic slash Hankai toy line. The transformations are very, very similar. It's just that the Studio Series and the Earthrise version of Starscream was remolded to be a little bit larger and have a little bit more detail and articulation. But while I still have my Starscream on my display table, I'm going to move him over and bring in my Earthrise Starscream. And as I noted earlier on, there's very little differences between the two figures in their jet mode. And I have to say the same about the robot mode. The two major differences are, or three, the blue for the Studio Series Starscream is a little bit lighter to match the cartoon series, a little bit darker for the Earthrise series, and it looks more like 
maybe the same kind of blue. I mean, the blue for the Generation 1 toy was very, very dark. This is kind of clo closer to that, you know, that uh, color scheme. And also, the Decepticon symbols are a different size, and I noted in the jet mode, the one for the Studio Series is a bit larger, and the paint detail on the Earthrise Starscream's wings is more like the Generation 1 Starscream. But other than that, both figures are identical. Even the white plastics are a very, very uh, similar color. On the boxes, though, the Studio Series pictured on the box had a whiter plastic, so I thought that the the plastic would be a different color, but no, they're, they're, they're pretty close. But other than that, both figures are the same. Now I'm going to go ahead and go over some of the items and accessories that came with Studio Series Coronation Starscream. First, I want to talk about his four null rays. As you can see, he had two null rays attached to his shoulders, and you got these two null rays that were more like guns. And these guns were actually featured in one episode of the Generation 1 cartoon series, Master Builder. And it was the episode where the Constructicons were thought to be trained in Decepticons, so the Decepticons are waiting for the Constructicons to return back after building their tower with Grapple and Hoist. And Starscream, Thundercracker, and Skywarp were all pointing their guns at the Constructicons when they returned. And they were holding them in their hands. That was only one time I remember it happening. But also, this set also came with Coronation Gear. So I'm going to remove Starscream's Null Rays from his shoulders. And I'm going to go ahead and be proactive. And I'm going to go ahead and plug in those guns into the shoulder armor right here because there's really no place to plug the shoulder cannons in after you have the shoulder pieces plugged in because there's a, pull, there's a peg hole right here and a pull hole right here and you're actually using the one and only pull hole they included in the star screen on a shoulder. So you pretty much the only way you could attach your null ray is from that port right inside the shoulder right here. So I'm going to do that again. Get that little pink tab right here. I'm going to just put in the shoulder gun right here. Then you got this little peg hole right here in the shoulder. I just want to go ahead and plug that right in uh, Starscream's shoulder. Like that. So, so far I have his shoulder cannon and his shoulder armor. Next I'm going to go ahead and put on Starscream's crown. And that fits right on top of his head. And you go ahead and you turn around Starscream, you got that nose cone right here, you go ahead and lift that up. In the center of his back, you have that little porthole right here. Then you have his cape. It's in the molded plastic, much like the Masterpiece Starscream. You go ahead and you plug that right into that hole. And now you should have Starscream in this full coronation gear. The next accessory I want to talk about is the throne that came with Coronation Starscream and this throne baffles me just a little bit because this throne was actually not featured in the Transformers the movie this throne was actually in the very first episode of the generation 1 cartoon series more than meets the eye part 1 and this is the actual throne that Megatron sat on aboard the nemesis while they're chasing down the Autobots while they're escaping Cybertron to look for new energy sources so I brought it in my Siege Megatron just to show you how well he fits into this throne and how it looks like it was made for Megatron. I mean, he fits right into this throne. Now I'm going to go ahead and grab Starscream and show you that Starscream does not fit in this throne well at all. First of all, this little red plate right here gets in the way of his thigh so he can't really have a proper seated position. And also, when you bend his knee too much, it pops out of that that joint right there so you can't really bend his knee also so that's the furthest his knee will be able to bend without popping out so he's not re really molded or designed to sit in his throne and also his wings get in the way of the, the armrest so he does not sit well in this throne at all he kind of like floats on the throne I mean this throne was not designed for him but it's very strange because there is a gimmick on the back of the throne where you can store all of Coronation Starscream's weapons and accessories, such as his null rays, right here, and right here. And also, 
if you flip the cannon forward like that, you can store both shoulder armors on the bottom here. One right here. You gotta flip the gun again. Take the peg right here. Plug it into the hole in the bottom right here. Right in. Like that. Then you go ahead and you take the crown. And sometimes the crown does not want to stay in there. So I'm not sure if it's going to do that on camera this time. But it isn't. Like that. And you go ahead and you fold the wing in like that. You tab it right in the middle. And this is this this is how the weapons and accessories are supposed to be stored on the back of Starscream's throne, which I don't think it does a really good job of that, but you can still see the cape from the, from the back. Not sure why the throne was included in this set, because Starscream was actually just standing on a podium in that actual scene they're trying to reenact before Galvatron disintegrated him. I am just thrilled and ecstatic that they finally brought out a coronation version of Starscream to a main Transformer toy line. The only issue I have is they're considering this version of Starscream a leader class, which drives the price point up to $52.99. And to me, Starscream is still considered a Voyager class Transformer, just with a few more accessories. So does this justify driving them up to the leader class price point? Well, that's up to you guys because I would personally pay for a kit that included the throne, the crown, the shoulder armor, the two null rays, and the crown for an initial $21. So I would say that's that's a good value right there. You're getting a lot for that for that $21. But if you guys want any of the information valuable in this review, please like and share this video. Also, if you really enjoy my content, please subscribe to my channel and while you're there, click the bell to be notified of any future videos. Thank you for watching Red Seal's Awesome Toy Collector's Review. Check you guys out next time.